I uh, now recognize the gentlelady from the beautiful island of American Samoa who's blessed with beautiful tropical rainforest for five minutes, Ms. Rodawagon. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, along with the ranking member for holding this oversight hearing to explore solutions to reduce the risks of uh, wildfires. I also thank the uh, panel for your appearance today. You know, Mr. Chairman, as we all do, when the fire bell rings, there are no politics among the response of our brave men and women in the firefighting corps. The firefighting family is a very close-knit group extending throughout the United States and all its territories, including a small place where I come from, American Samoa. Firefighters from American Samoa, based in the National Park of American Samoa, just this past August, recently fought side by side with their fellow fight firefighters in Modoc National Forest in Alturas, California, and Sheehy Memorial Fitness Park in Redding, California last year. The Samoan firefighting crew responded to the call to help their fellow firefighters in multiple instances in California and Nevada over the past several years. And last year, I visited our Samoan firefighters at their work site in Redding, California. There's a long and proud tradition of courage in both Samoan and firefighting culture, and I commend all the firefighters in the states and territories for putting themselves in harm's way in order to protect the natural beauty of all our parks for the recreation and enjoyment of everyone. I have a question for Mr. Chilcott. In addition to a reduced wildfire threat and an economic boost from timber harvest, what other benefits might communities and the surrounding ecosystems enjoy from healthier, actively managed forests? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. There, the benefits are, are broad. Certainly the economic benefit uh, you mentioned is critical to our communities. The impact of an enhanced environmental position where we don't have to breathe in hazardous smoke, the improvement of our water quality, are, are important. Uh, we have seen scarring that lasts for decades from these catastrophic wildfires in a valley that is 73 percent owned or managed by the federal government, uh, limiting uh, what we can do and perform to protect our view shed. So active management is critical and your partnership is critical for us to move forward. Thank you. Mr. Rigdon. How do other important natural resources on tribal land depend on effective forest management? And how does the successful forest management ensure that the tribes can continue to utilize those resources? I think the, that's a critical part of this conversation is, is historically, our lands were shaped by the use of fire by my ancestors, by the people there before that lit fires and created the habitats that were necessary that um, made the West what the West was with the large diameter ponderosa pine and the savanna forest of that those eras. There's foods, there's natural resources, there's things that our community depends upon today. That there's practices and our culture practices today that are dependent upon that type of habitat that is there. It's important that the role of fire that plays was historically done through through our people. And, and sometimes I, I get kind of, management has always been a part of, part of the land. And I think it's a, an important part. Our people did it in a way to sustain our, our way of life in, in that place there. And so um, that traditional ecological knowledge is a very important part of the history of what the land tells us. And 100 years of not, not recognizing that science and, and you know, fire suppression and those activities has helped lead to where we are with some of the respect to the unhealthiness of the force you see. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. 